So let's now talk about carbon monoxide being diffusion limited. What does that really mean? It means that um, carbon monoxide has a very, very high affinity for hemoglobin. So once it binds to hemoglobin, it does not let go. So let's say we have four molecules of carbon monoxide in the alveolus. They're going to come and bind to four RBC very, very tightly, and it's not going to let go. By the way, the partial pressure of carbon monoxide in the plasma is zero. And the reason for that is because it goes and binds to the RBC. It does not waste its... Um, gas by dissolving in the plasma and I'll tell you there's another reason for that. So once it binds to this RBC it does not let go. It just binds to it really really tightly. Now there is lots of RBC in the plasma but there is a little bit of carbon monoxide in the alveolus. So I can see that the supply of RBC is much greater than the supply of carbon of the gas. As a result this is a diffusion limited problem, okay? Because there is enough blood flow, but there is not enough gas flow. So that's why it's diffusion limited. There is less diffusion. If there was more carbon monoxide, more, more of it is gonna to bind to the RBC. And, and if there was less blood going to the alveolus, then that would be a perfusion problem because there is less blood flow. But in this case, there is less gas flow. As a result, this is diffusion limited. And because this is diffusion limited, and because it has such high affinity for the RBC, none of it gets dissolved in the plasma. So let's now talk about the graphs we, we usually see in our books. So for example, this is diffusion limited, and this is the beginning of a, a alveolar a capillary. And this is kind of the end. So this is the length of cap, uh, pulmonary cap capillary. And you can see the level of carbon monoxide is slowly going up, but it's not equilibrating with the uh, exchange of the arterial. And the reason for that is because there will never be enough uh, hemoglobin to bind to the carbon monoxide, just like here. I mean, as soon as the carbon monoxide comes, it comes and binds to the RBC and its point will come when all the RBC is going to be bound okay so there is going to be blood flow there is going to be blood flow but they're all going to be bound to our carbon monoxide so any more carbon monoxide uh, any more um, carbon monoxide in the alveolus is not going to be able to bind to any of the hemoglobin because all the hemoglobin is bound. So even though there is perfusion, even though there is blood flow, it will never equilibrate to the amount of uh, diffusion that's going on. So I want to expand on this topic a little more. So you might think that this is a perfusion problem. No, because the perfusion is perfectly fine, right? There is blood coming to the alveolus, but the blood is bound to the carbon monoxide now. How can it bind to more carbon monoxide? And this carbon monoxide is not even letting go because of its high affinity. So perfusion is fine, but the diffusion is not happening anymore, right? The diffusion is stuck where it is. All the carbon monoxide is kind of accumulating here because there is no more RBC to bound to. Right? So that's why it will never equilibrate between the alveolus and the arterial. There will always be a difference because a point come when no more, uh, no more binding is going to happen. As a result, this is going to cause a gradient between the alveolus and the arterial, making this a diffusion-limited problem. So that's exactly what we're seeing in this graph. Yes, initially the, the graph kind of goes up because more and more carbon monoxide binds, but a point comes when it's not going to go up anymore because all the hemoglobin is taken up by the carbon monoxide uh, that was coming to the alveolus. In fact, this is a misleading graph. It should not be so high. It seems like it is almost catching up with the diffusion that is coming to the alveolus. In fact, it is kind of a little more lower, something like that. It will never catch up to the amount of gas that is coming to the alveolus. Okay, so that is our carbon monoxide. That's why it's diffusion limited.
It's just the opposite with uh, perfusion limited. With perfusion limited, there is enough blood that can take off uh, our uh, perfusion limited gases, for example, for example, carbon dioxide and nitrogen gas. So let's say this is our alveolus and let's say this is our carbon dioxide and let's say these are our hemoglobin. So what happens in perfusion limited is there is blood coming to the alveolus, okay? But the amount of carbon dioxide that is coming or let's say N2O because we have carbon dioxide in our system too, let's say any, any gas that is uh, perfusion limited, lots of that gas is in the alveolus, right? So the supply of the gas is much, much, much greater than the supply of RBC or the supply of blood that can bind and hold that kind of, uh, f of gas. So as a result, there is not enough blood. Like, for example, let's say there's lots of passengers and there is one train. But let's say the train cannot accommodate all the passengers that's there. Let's say the passengers in this case is our N2O, okay? And our train is our blood vessel. So yes, the train is coming. The blood vessel is carrying the little compartments of the train, which are every single RBC. But it cannot carry that many passengers. So the problem is really perfusion, or the problem is really the train. There needs to be more train. So the limitation in this case is really the blood or the perfusion. There need to be more blood to carry all these uh, gases. So the limitation here is, uh, is the blood. So that's why this is perfusion limited. But in case of the carbon monoxide here, the limitation is not perfusion because the gases are coming and binding to the RBC. So perfusion is perfect. So perfusion is fine. But no more diffusion can happen because no more of this carbon monoxide can bind to the RBC anymore because they are already blocking those RBC compartments. So the limitation in this case is really diffusion and not perfusion, which is the opposite of what we saw in this case. So let's look at our perfusion limited graph now. See, this graph is equilibrating with the alveolus. So this is alveolus and arterial. It's almost equilibrating. If there was more blood coming to this graph, then the graph, you know, it would not equilibrate like this. So the limitation was perfusion. If there is more blood, there would be more binding. Because the limitation of the blood flow, obviously the blood is coming to the lungs perfectly but if there was more blood coming to the lungs more binding would happen as a result this is uh, perfusion limited so let's uh, last of all let's look at this uh, this graph here this is also the length of pulmonary capillary you see that this purple line at the very top is our normal oxygen and you can see that with exercise there is a little bit less binding than the normal because there is blood is rushing out of the pump, out of the lungs a little faster and with fibrosis right with fibrosis there is going to be diffusion limited um, because there it, the, it won't be able to diffuse easily right there is going to be a problem here, so it won't be able to diffuse easily. So with fibrosis, even less oxygen is bound. So if you have a graph like this, and if there's three gradients, you know the first one got to be uh, normal. And the one that is lowest on the curve is going to be our fibrosis, and the one that's in the middle is going to be exercise.